Okay, good morning to all of you. Today we will discuss something about the introduction to system call. Okay, today we will discuss about system call. So before before we go to the system call, okay, before we see what actually is system call, first let us uh, study what is user mode, what is kernel mode. Okay, first we will see the difference between user mode and kernel mode. Okay, so so. <coughs> Nowadays, the modern operating system, all the modern operating systems support both kernel mode as well as user mode. Okay. First of all, we will see what exactly is a kernel mode and what exactly is a user mode. Okay. Suppose if, if CPU is executing, suppose CPU, if CPU is executing any program in kernel mode, if CPU is executing any program in kernel mode, okay, so the CPU can access, the CPU can access any address memory and it can access any resource in the kernel mode, okay. If the CPU is executing a program in kernel mode, if the CPU is executing a program in kernel mode, the CPU can access any address space, it can, it can access any address location as well as it can access any resource in the kernel mode. Okay. And if, if a program is crashed inside the kernel mode, if a program crashes, if a program crashes, the entire kernel mode will be halted because the entire kernel mode is crashed and the entire kernel mode is halted. That is about kernel mode. Coming to the user mode, okay, coming to the user mode, if the CPU, if the CPU is executing, okay, any, if the CPU is executing any program in the user mode, for your kind information, the CPU will not have, the CPU will not have the CPU will not have direct contact with the resources. Okay. So, if CPU uh, wants to execute anything in user mode, okay, and if it wants to access, if it wants to access anything, so it has to keep a permission or it has to keep a request to the kernel mode. Okay. If CPU is executing in user mode, while executing, if CPU wants to use any resources or if it wants to use any RAM or any other resources, okay, the user mode will keep a request to the kernel mode so that if the, so that the kernel mode grants permission to use those resources, then the CPU can use those resources, okay, and if any program if the program what the CPU is executing, if that program is, if that program is crashed, only that particular program will be stopped. The remaining programs will be as usual. So there is no big loss in the user mode. Okay. If any program is crashed, only that particular program will be crashed. All the remaining programs will be as usual. That's the main advantage of user mode. That is the reason why most of the uh, most of the operating systems they will you they will be using or most of the users will be preferring the user mode only okay now we will see see when cpu is in kernel mode when the cpu is in kernel mode the code being executed can access any memory address and it can access any hardware resources when it is in kernel mode it can access any memory address or any memory location as well as it can access any resources. Similarly, that is the reason why this kernel mode is very powerful. The kernel mode is very powerful. And if a program crashes in kernel mode, the entire system will be halted. That is regarding kernel mode. We have seen. So, suppose if it is user mode. In user mode, when CPU is in user mode, the programs don't access they don't have, they don't have direct access to the memory or resources. We have discussed, you know. 
So if the CPU is executing any program in user mode, the CPU will not have direct access with the resources or anything. Okay, or memory locations. It don't have direct access. For that, what it will do is it will keep a request to the kernel mode. Okay, that we will discuss in the next slide. So here, uh, if any program crashes, only that particular program is halted. The remaining programs will be as usual. That is the advantage of user mode. So that's the reason why most of the operating systems are running user mode. Okay. So next we have. Okay. Next we will see what is the system call. Now we have seen till now we have seen the difference between. Till now we have seen the difference between user mode, kernel mode. Now we will see what is the system call. What is the system call? So, so system call is nothing but just see the definition. When a program is in user mode and if it requires any RAM or any resources, it must ask the kernel to grant the permission. Okay, this is done via something called a system call. See here. So, if the if the user if the program is executing in user mode and if it wants to use any resources or any memory locations, what it will do, what it will do is the CPU, I mean the user mode will keep a request to the kernel mode. Okay. So that request we simply call it as system call. That's what it was specified. When a program in user mode requires access to RAM or uh, hardware resources, it must ask the kernel to provide access to the resource. This is done via something called system call. That is system call. Okay. And uh, switch. See, context switch. When a program makes a system call, the mode switched from user mode to kernel mode is called context switch. See. So, if the CPU is executing in user mode, if it wants to utilize, see, CPU is executing a program in user mode. So, if it wants to access any RAM or resources, so it will keep a request to the kernel mode. The kernel mode will grant the permission. Okay. So, now, now, uh, now we will be in kernel mode. Okay. Now the CPU will be executing in kernel mode. Okay. So, uh, whatever the permission the user mode kept, whatever the permission we kept to kernel mode, that is system call. Okay. And uh, here, now instead of executing in user mode, we started executing in kernel mode. That is context switch. Once the execution is over here, now again, after completing the task, again we will come back to the user mode. Okay, that is also context. That is also context switch. See, when a program makes a system call, the mode is switched from user mode to kernel mode. This is called a context switch. Similarly, then the kernel provides the resources which the program requested. After that, another context switch happens to switch from kernel mode to user mode. Okay, so this is exactly what happens. So, and these are some of the, see, system calls are made by, in uh, system calls are done in different programs, okay, for perform and in different situations, okay. System calls are made by the user level programs in the following situations. So, see here, the first situation is for creating or opening or reading or deleting a file in the file management, okay. If you want to open a file for uh, creating a file, reading a file, writing a file or appending a file okay, or deleting a file etc. Whatever the file operations we perform on a file, for performing that we need system call. Okay. These are some of the situations where we will be using the system call. Okay. Next is creating and managing a new process. If you want to create a process, we will be using the command fork. Okay. We will be using the command fork. This is for creating a new process. Okay. So, for creating a new process and for managing the new process means uh, when we create a process, we will keep that process in ready state, next waiting state, then executing state like that. While executing again, sometimes it may be kept in waiting state like that. Whatever the operations we perform, all those 
will also come under here because first we will create a process then we will keep it in ready state then we will keep it in execution state while execution again we may keep it in waiting state again from waiting state it may be kept in ready state again from ready state it may be kept in execution state after execution is completed finally we will keep it in terminated state like that creating and managing new process next creating a connection in the network sending and receiving packets okay so if there are if there is a sender and a receiver what we do is first first what we do is sender receiver first what we do is first we will establish a connection between them first we will we will establish a connection between the sender and receiver our source and destination so then we will send a packet to the receiver okay and receiver sends the acknowledgement okay sends data sends data and receives the acknowledgement that that particular data was received successfully like that this this uh, form of interaction will also take place will also be done with the help of the system call finally last one is requesting access to hardware device uh, requesting access to a hardware device like a mouse or printer or scanner or pen drive or keyboard etc okay so we may we may connect number of uh, terminals external externally we may connect number of terminals to the computer so they may also come under the system call because we are uh, switching the context right so this is something about system call what is a system call we have discussed see here once again we are discuss system call is nothing but suppose when the cpu is uh, executing a program which is in user mode okay so so if that uh, cpu at the time cpu wants to use any ram or uh, any address memory or any resources at the time we keep a request to the kernel mode okay that request we call it as system call that request we call it as system call now we will be operating in kernel mode that uh, change of mode from user mode to kernel mode we call it as context switch okay once the usage of that particular resources is over again that uh, kernel mode okay that will be changed from then the cpu will come out from kernel mode to the user mode that is also we call it as context switch so this is something about the interaction of system call okay thank you